I'm Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Wiccan high priestesses to learn the truth about the highly controversial beliefs and bizarre rituals of this occultist religion. Today, I'm gonna put their words to the test by allowing them to use me as a vessel to cast a spell. But what I really wanna know is, is this religion so controversial because it commonly empowers women? Or is it because of something much more nefarious? Like worshiping Satan? Hello, Phyllis. Hi. Good morning. Hey. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. Now, how would you describe yourself? Wiccan, what kind of words would you use? Generally speaking, I refer to myself as a Wiccan priestess. Most of the time I just reach for witch. Witch. Witch is such a broad term these days that when I'm in the company of other practitioners, mm. it's more helpful to define myself as Wiccan. What is the biggest misconception about Wiccans? I guess it's still the old one that, that we're involved with Satan or something, but I'm sorry to say to those who believe that, that they are completely wrong. There's some watching right now. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, darling, but you're completely wrong. Satan is an Abrahamic figure. He exists within the pages of the Bible. He is their projection of evil, and they need to deal with him instead of projecting him onto other people, especially us. You are one of America's first public witches. I am. I'm now the whole world <laughs> is composed of witches. I was one of the first. There were very few of us that had the guts to come out, and I was a lawyer at the time on top of it all, in the very early 80s. People were nervous about coming out as witches after the Salem witch trials in America. That makes no sense. Why would people be concerned about coming out as a witch? I don't know. Why are you so stressed, right? So I'm the witch craze was 500 years ago. Just the mere accusation of being a witch was enough to have you thrown in jail, tortured, murdered. What do Wiccans believe? We don't necessarily have a unified moral code, for example, mm -hmm. or a unified belief about what happens when we die or what gods are like. What we share tends to be ritual stuff, what our tools are, how we frame our liturgy. What you do is more important to us, and what you do reflects your beliefs. When people hear Wicca, they think witchcraft, they think satanic rituals. There are no devils and demons and and there's definitely no Satan. He is entirely a Christian character. He's their figure who personifies evil. Can you tell us about the history of Wicca, where it came from, how long it's been around? <laughs> The 1940s in mm -hmm. England, there is this popular movement to start looking toward magic and the magical traditions of that area. And there's this guy named Gerald Gardner who comes out and he starts writing popular books. He has a tabloid presence and basically he comes out and tells people, hey, I was initiated into this surviving witch cult. I've gotten permission to write about it and share it with the world. People start seeking him and various associates of his out mm -hmm. for initiation and eventually he initiates folks in the U.S., his books make it over there, and people begin spreading his tradition in the United States. The particular tradition that I follow goes back to that dude. He brought people in, they brought people in, they brought people in, I'm down here somewhere. Oh, like a pyramid scheme. That. Yes, mm. exactly. <laughs> no, I'm stopping there. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, is Wicca a modern religion or is it ancestral? It wasn't called Wicca, but it existed more than 5,000 years ago. It was the indigenous wisdom tradition of Europe. Wicca tends to be the spirituality. It developed as a modern rebirth. Would you say that the, the ritual that was done to initiate you changed you or the way you perceived the world or made you feel differently? Was there some kind of value placed yes. on that initiation? I know some folks who will say that their initiations felt like a culmination of something. For other people, it's the moment itself is that, that transitory kind of explosive moment where suddenly you're different. If I were uh, a skeptic, I might hear things like, there was a guy at this point sometime <laughs> within recent history that found this thing and then started spreading his word and then people started becoming initiated into it. I would think cult. Yeah. And that word was used. I think cult is one of those words where 
We use it usually to mean this religion over here that we don't like. People used to write about the cult of democracy in the United States, this idea of devotion to something, adherence to something. So it's really only in very recent decades that the word cult has come to have this blanket kind of negative connotation. But amongst my, my coven mates, yeah, we use the word cult. Most people, when they hear cult, assume that it means unquestioning devotion mm -hmm. to a belief system that was taught to you. And that definitely is not who we are. If we could be said to have a central virtue, it would be autonomy and personal authority. My devotion is to my tradition and to my gods. It's not to other witches, and it's certainly not to a founder. Do you cast spells? Do you use magic? Oh yeah, from the very beginning. If you ask most sort of young witches, they'll tell you that magic is the art of manipulating supernatural forces to yeah. manifest what you want. Mm -hmm. Not so much. I mean, that's kind of an old model. What is the magic actually? The magic is the flow of the sacred from energy into embodiment. Everything's interconnected. And that flow of connection, that relationship, that energy that moves back and forth between us and the plants, which mm. could use a little more water and a little oh, more sun. Oh, oh, we're trying not to talk about that. <laughs> Physicists now talk about 13, 14 dimensions of reality. Mm. In fact, we mm. operate mostly in three, but the mind has a capacity to experience much more. When you open your mind and open your heart, the sacred comes to you. You ask and the energy flows into you and it changes you, and you work with it. And working with it is casting a spell. I thought it was you had to find five very rare herbs, mix yes. them together in a concoction of your own blood and the blood of some random person, and then you have to mix it up and mash it together. Yeah, no. And then you have to drink it six times. Yeah? Where did you hear this? Stop going on witch talk. And then all your <laughs> dreams will manifest. A good spell opens your heart, asks for what you need, and then if you wish to, to enhance you know, the, the asking, you can add herbs and oils. There's an artistry to it, mm -hmm. and it can be very beautiful. But it doesn't have to be anything more than breathing or drinking water or making an offering. Magic potentially involves a lot of things. People who will tell you that if you make a wish on your birthday candles and you blow those out, like that's a type of spell. Lots of people have different perspectives. All of that potentially is magic. To me, magic can be a useful tool for kind of controlling those things that we might think of as coincidence or luck. It's not gonna fix everything. It puts enough things into play where the thing that I am hoping will happen has a better chance of happening. There are people who are very bookish and there are ancient traditions of magic that we could study and we could potentially master. There are recipe books out there. And do they work? They can, yeah. I know, that sounds very coy. Very up for interpretation. Some people are in this camp that says, Here's a spell, and the elements of it by themselves are powerful. There are other people who, it's a creative act. It's something that it's born in the same way that you might write a song or make a piece of visual art. So it's a piece of art. Yeah. And it makes you feel a certain way, mm -hmm. and so. it might change your actions. Totally. So there isn't uh, a general sense of here's a recipe or an equation for you to follow, and yeah. what works for me will work for you. It really is individual by individual. I can give you a recipe, but if you've got no heart in that recipe, I don't think it's gonna work as well for you. An example of magic. I was in law school and I started having dreams that came true. One of the dreams that I kept having was a, a woman who would appear in the dream. She was bare chested and she had a crown on her head and a light at her throat. And she was holding a book. A friend of mine took me to have my tarot cards read. Mm -hmm by a woman who she said was a witch. Does a spread, she sees things that I've discussed with nobody. I'm impressed. We're all done, she says. I have a women's circle. I think you might be interested. You might find what you're looking for there. Shake her hand politely. I say, thank you, that's very kind. I pay her, I'm out the door. These are witches, I'm, witches, circles, no. She said, well, you should think about it. I go back to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and I'm walking into a new wing of sculptures, and suddenly, like, you're seated next to me, in front of me, is the woman in my dream. It was a statue carved out of marble. Instead of a book, she's holding a rolled up sheaf of papers. I looked at the little plaque next to her toes and it said, the Libyan Sibyl. And I looked up Sibyl and it said, an ancient prophetess, comma, a witch. The universe is speaking to you. The sacred is showing itself to you. 
So it's more of a question of if you are listening. You have to listen, you have to look, you have to open, and you have to ask the question. And I would love nothing more than to talk about BetterHelp for just a quick second because they're sponsoring this episode. And let me tell you why that is so cool. Therapy has helped me reframe the way that I view the world and myself by allowing me to feel empathy for my younger self and therefore, of course, feel empathy for my current self. So let's say you struggle with anxiety or stress or motivation or anything like that. BetterHelp offers a quicker and more affordable alternative to in-person therapy where you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. BetterHelp ensures that all their therapists have the experience necessary and that they're certified and licensed and they provide customized therapy that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone or even speak over the phone if that's not something that you're comfortable with. So with all that said, huge thank you to BetterHelp who are giving I spent today with viewers and listeners of the Uncensored Podcast, 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Padilla. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Wiccans. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to we're gonna have you do your very own spell. What would those spells look like? Are you allowed to say, or is that secret? I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. There's no cameras rolling, so don't There's, worry. No, that's good. It's, it's all. It's just you and I me. I believe you. I totally turned off the cameras. <laughs> And I am very gullible, okay. so let's go. Good, let's go. I'm going to ask you to think about prosperity and success. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like for you. I already got prosperity and success. Let's see, look around me. I mean, I see some things that could be I'm in this upon. $7 billion studio <laughs> with 45 associates who help me at every single moment. I mean, I you've got me more. here with you, so that's pretty... And you are a hefty penny. I am. <laughs> So fundamentally what you're gonna do, uh -huh. you're gonna make yourself a little bag. We're gonna put some okay. stuff in it. Okay. We're going to decide that it's magical. Okay, so it's a decision, it's an internal belief. I think so, yeah. Okay. So here's what you're gonna do first. I brought a bunch of little pouches. They're in different colors. And I want you to think, like if you were gonna bring success or prosperity into your life, like give me a color association. I am gonna go with the green bag. It's got multiple different textures and the fact that it looks handmade to me feels like more connection to the earth. Okay, so now I wanna think about these herbs. What might you pick like as, as kind of our base? I think the base would be spearmint. I feel like this is most associated with taking care of yourself, associated with brushing your teeth and having a minty mouth. Yeah, your day's gonna go better if you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I want to look at some of these other objects we have here. Some of this was in like, I've got a little cuff on my desk of like interesting stones. I see three objects what here do you that see? I immediately would be gravitated toward. What are they? First off would be this shiny little That's right. pyrite. It's beautiful. I think the color goes really well with the bag that we have it's here. It's also called fool's gold. Fool. And again, we have that association with mm -hmm. wealth, with prosperity. And, and then the amethyst, I have a connection with this from when I was younger okay. because I used to like to collect rocks. I was a really cool kid that liked to collect mm -hmm. rocks. And then this one here, I think uh, the light traveling through it is really beautiful. I love that you're putting yourself in there too. The last thing you're going to do is write what is often called a petition. Mm. I'm not gonna read it and you don't have to share it with anybody else. Okay. And you don't even have to write words. You can draw a symbol that's important to you if you've got song lyrics that are meaningful to you, something that just speaks to the prosperity that you wanna bring into your life. I drew a waterfall. I feel like it's a, it's a reminder to go with the flow and how even when it feels like you are falling, you'll still end up back in the water on your journey flowing forward. I like it. Mm. Great. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing now. And should I be popping it in here? Yeah. Okay, and that's yours. Right. And you're going to keep that forever and ever or until you feel like it's done its job with mm -hmm. you and place it wherever. And that could have a huge profound effect on the way that I go about my life. But is it all is it all here? Even if you've finished your spell, whatever it is, and you feel like it hasn't worked, I think that there's still value just in the fact that you performed it at all. If we think that magic is art, then it's equally valuable to sit down and create and not worry about the outcome. Let's say it is all in my head. Let's say that it's a placebo and I'm casting some kind of spell because like I'm very anxious about a school test or I'm very anxious about whatever. Like just the process of sitting down and going through something like this, I find calms my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And at that point, who cares? Who cares if it's a placebo because placebos work. The belief in something working is enough to make it work sometimes. And that's something else that I think makes Wicca weird and why I kind of hesitate around the idea of belief, because to me, belief may not be the most important thing. Sometimes just the doing it is important. 
Well, thank you for this. And You're I welcome. will leave it up to my interpretation to see what comes from this. Magic. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony's a witch great. now. I am a witch. Do you find that people tend to be skeptical when they hear about you being a witch? When they hear about what types of benefits and things this brings you? So the first reaction, oh, even now, uh, amongst too many people, you know, that either you're wacky or you're satanic, it's just tedious. But as soon as you explain, look, it's, it, it's an ancestral indigenous wisdom tradition. Totally has nothing to do with any of those stereotypes. Those were visited upon people uh, because of the church, because of its hostility, because it wanted complete political and religious control. I mean, I've tried to engage with fundamentalists of various stripes. And generally speaking, it doesn't matter what your faith is. If it's not theirs, they're not listening. I mean, I've been, I've been Wiccan for my entire adult life. I was exploring it as a teenager, and I wasn't raised in a religious household. And when I started particularly going to college, um, particularly like in the Southeast, most of the people who I know were raised in some kind of Christian household. And that stuff isn't less weird than what I do. Believing in bodily resurrection is not more reasonable than what you and I just did. Right. <laughs> like, personally, I just wish that we all could appreciate that if it's weird, at least we're all weird. What I find interesting <laughs> is that so many religions are accepted as faith in this religion. We should not question it. But with something like Wiccans, people immediately have assumptions about what it means, even if these beliefs have been around for potentially thousands of years longer than yes. the widespread accepted religions of today. Unfortunately, a lot of religious institutions, they become institutions and they become political institutions as a result. There are always people who practice their, their faiths who are made better by their faiths. But there are a lot of people who are not, and they are very often in the hierarchies. So power and control, fear of women, and it hangs on. So we have to work very hard to disabuse people of all of those negative stereotypes and lies. I never really thought about how the terms magic and spellcasting can mean something entirely different based on your previous exposure to the words. What if magic really is all just a matter of setting your intentions and opening yourself up for interpretations that align with that intention? If I cast a spell to have a good day, am I more likely to have a good day because of that? Because of my intention to do so? Whether it's a placebo or something more, doesn't matter if it actually works. I went home, I pulled out my annotated Oxford English Dictionary and the magnifying glass. <laughs> You're describing a world before the internet. I know you don't know what I'm talking about, but like, like this. It's, yeah. it's the physical version of doing this. Okay, right? now I understand. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <sighs>